Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, May 22nd, 2020. The Fair Tax helps solve the student loan debt crisis. There's a disturbing discussion on the amount of student loan debt on the Student Loan Hero website. Some of the points listed there. Total U.S. student loan debt is a whopping $1.64 trillion. 44.7 million Americans are carrying student loan debt. 11.1% of student loans are 90 days or more delinquent or are in default. Monthly student loan payments, among those not in deferment, usually range between $200 and $299 on average. 69% of college seniors graduating with a four-year degree in 2019 had student loan debt. Average debt at graduation from public and nonprofit colleges was $29,900 in 2019. That's a 2% increase from 2018. 66% of graduates from public colleges had loans as of May 2018 with an average debt of $25,550. 75% of graduates from private nonprofit colleges had loans as of May 2018 with an average debt of $32,300. And a staggering 88% of graduates from for-profit colleges had loans as of May 2018 carrying an average debt of $39,950. Students borrowed an estimated $259 billion for the 2018-19 academic year, and 5% of that amount was private loans. 48% of borrowers who attended for-profit colleges default within 12 years. Now that's compared to 12% for public college attendees, 14% of nonprofit college attendees. Now, the Internal Revenue Code provides a deduction for all of the interest paid, up to $2,500, on student loans for people making up to $65,000 a year. Now, that deduction phases out as income increases. Now, a person who borrowed the average student loan, $29,900, for 30 years at 4%, will make monthly payments of $143. Because the interest is compounded daily, that person will pay $100 in interest in the first payment with only $43 applied to the principal. In the first year, an average borrower will pay $1,186 in interest, $530 in principal. If the loan is paid off on time over 30 years, the borrower will have repaid the $29,900 in principal plus an additional $21,488 in interest for a total repayment of $51,388. Now he or she will not have to itemize their deductions to take advantage of the interest deduction for student loans. They can use that directly on their 1040. Now, in the first year, the borrower can deduct the $1,186 in interest paid from their taxable income. And assuming a tax rate of 22%, this will save them $261 in federal taxes. The $29,900 in principal paid back is not deductible, and it's paid for with after-tax dollars. In addition, the $925 left owing after deducting the $261 from the $1186 will have to be paid with after-tax dollars as well. In addition, like a home mortgage, as time goes on, the amount of each payment going to interest will decrease, the amount going towards the principal will increase. Now this means the interest deduction gets smaller every year with more and more the payments coming with after-tax dollars. The Tax Foundation released a paper entitled The U.S. Burden on Labor by Garrett Watson. Some of his key points, average workers in the United States face two major taxes on wage income, the individual income tax and the payroll tax, which is levied on both the employee and the employer. Although slightly more than half of a U.S. worker's payroll tax burden is paid by their employer, the worker ultimately pays this tax through lower take-home pay. 
Before accounting for state and local sales taxes, the U.S. tax wedge, that is the tax burden that a single average wage earner faces, was 29.8% of pre-tax earnings in 2019, adding up to $18,368 in taxes. Now, of course, Mr. Watson is not including the additional costs incurred by the average wage earner that are buried in the cost of the goods he purchases. Mr. Watson assumes that the average worker would receive a 7.65% wage increase if the employer did not have to match the 7.65% in payroll taxes paid by the worker. Now, while there are many economists who agree with Mr. Watson's assumption, there are others who don't. Many don't believe that employers would automatically pass all of their 7.65% savings on to the employees. Now let's assume that the worker would not get any part of the employer paid 7.65% and subtract that amount from the 29.8% of his pre-tax earnings that he's paying in taxes. That leaves a tax burden of 22.1%, which will round down to 22%. Now, if a worker earned a gross income of $63,000, now that's the average median income for 2018, then he or she would have $49,140 after-tax dollars to spend. That's $4,095 a month to pay all of their monthly expenses, including their student loan payments. So, how does the fair tax help solve the student loan debt problem? The fair tax taxes the retail purchase of new goods and services. Principal and interest repayments are not taxed. Therefore, with the fair tax, a person looking to pay off his or her student loan will have not $49,140 available from which to make the payments, but $63,000, their full income. This means that they now have extra money available to pay off the loan with. Now, if they decided to increase their payment from $143 a month to $300 a month, The loan would be paid off in 12 years instead of 30, and doing that would save them almost $10,000 in interest. Now, when you look at the true cost of repaying a student loan based on the fact that it must be paid off with after-tax dollars, one would have to earn $35,380 to repay the principal amount of $29,900, and then they would have to earn another $20,477 to pay the $16,760 worth of interest that was still owing after using the 22% of $21,488 in total interest to reduce their taxes. Now this means that a student with a $29,900 loan will have to earn $55,827 in after-tax earnings to repay the loan. Now, this would apply not just to student loans, but to any loan on which the income payroll tax system makes you pay the principal amount with after-tax dollars. Now, with a fair tax, it could be paid off sooner, saving you a lot of interest, and in the case of a home mortgage, you would own your home outright a lot sooner. Now, of course, those of us who have outstanding loans that we are now paying on with after-tax dollars could pay them off even faster under the fair tax because prices will come down under the fair tax. Now, few will argue that if you take the embedded costs of the income payroll tax system out of retail prices, those prices will decrease by at least 10%. That's like giving everyone a 10% raise. In that case, a person earning $63,000 would find that he or she could purchase almost $70,000 worth of goods and services. And again, remember, the fair tax only applies to the retail purchase of new goods and services. If someone spent some of their money to purchase a previously occupied home or a used car, there would be no fair tax collected on those major purchases. In conclusion, the fair tax will be better for anyone who has a student loan, or any loan for that matter. Remember, for most loans, like mortgage loans, interest is deductible only if you itemize, and then only if your itemized deductions exceed the standard deduction. Since only about 10% of us will be itemizing now, that means that 90% of taxpayers will be paying their mortgages and other loans, both interest and principal, entirely with after-tax dollars. Now, with a fair tax, all of those loans would be paid with before-tax dollars, and loan payments are not retail purchases, so those payments would not be subject to the fair tax. 
Again, the fair tax applies only to the retail purchase of new goods and services. And thanks to the prebate, you don't pay a dime of fair tax out of your own pocket until your spending rises above the poverty level for your household. With the fair tax, you feed your family before you feed the government. Plus, you control the amount in federal taxes you pay, not some bureaucrat in D.C. As more and more people recognize the true cost of purchases, not just what they pay after tax, but what they pay out of their earnings, they will demand that the oppressive and corrupt income payroll tax system be replaced with the fair tax. So if you're ready to take a very significant step towards wresting control of your government back from a small group of corrupt people and making it possible for all to prosper, go to fairtax.org and join us. And then contact your member of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax, the only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the chairman's report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org.